G'day folks, Anthony Kilner here for Go RV and we're here in sunny Seymour on the banks of the mighty Goulburn River and we're here to meet Ben Souter and his lovely family and they're going to show us around their new Pursuit Carbon. Let's go have a look at it. So thanks for having me. The body and construction method behind the Pursuit is, is unique. It's constructed really from three pieces a chassis, an aluminium body, which is kind of like a tinny, and then a one-piece fiberglass cone. It's composite, so it's insulated, and it all sleeves together and forms a shell. It's, it's plate alloy. Um, it's a marine-grade plate alloy. You do have a fairly high weighting depth. It's not fully seam welded on the bottom. We try to keep the welds to a minimum, but also where you need them, because you can distort aluminium by putting too many welds into it. It is all sealed up and, and corked up and, and painted, and the cone is a one-piece cone. You don't have a joint on the corners on the tops. You don't have that joint there that can leak. You know, you're not looking at rust problems with the aluminium. They tear at anywhere between, say, 1650 to 1750, depending on your level of fit out. This one here, I think, is 1720. Your GTM's 2.7. On average, you'll have around 10% on your ball. It's nearly, I guess, around 950 to 1,000 kilos of payload. The Carbon Series Pursuit is the newest of our lineup. This one's running 210 litres, split over two tanks. You have a 140, you have a 70 right above it. You have a grey at the rear, which is 95. We're better off delivering a product to the customer or offering a product with most of the options in rather than a base product that doesn't have it and then you'll work your way to where you need to be. Most people will actually remove products from our lineup. At the price it's at, you have a fully loaded carbon from top to bottom. You can extend it from there. There are some options that may not suit certain customers, so we don't put it in all the models, but you do have a fairly substantial list of components in your carbon series, like air conditioning, gas heating, um, all lithium systems, Garmin, everything's there, you know, the air suspension, it's an instantaneous hot water system. It's, it's all integrated, it's there to begin with. Let's go and check out this camper. So Ben, great kitchen space, outdoor kitchen space. Let's talk through what we've got all here. Barbie, stainless plate, uh, it's like a dual burner, really cool, you can use them as an oven, they make a little rack for it. This is a fiberglass kitchen, so it's all done in the mold, and so your sink's all molded, it's all one. Dual burner, um, Dometic gas cooker. I love the fact that you've got the little wine and oil rack happening in here, but yeah. there's also a lot of stuff happening in the back of here. It's all localised, a lot of our cabling and air system and all that, it's kind of all in that zone there. So you've got air, a high flow water filtration, anything coming out of the water tanks will go through that water filter. Level three cruise master plate, so that comes from Cruise Master when you option up for level three. We've been running Cruise Master since day one. We use the Drop Stub XT option with Firestone airbags. Mixer tap, 12 volt, and then USBs. And so that's the water outlet for our water when you're using the sink. We've got the gas. Now, a little bit of storage under there, and I notice you've got a nice little storage unit here. And then of course, we've got that what looks like a fridge. This is our 85 isotherm, and we buy these from Robasto. They're a nice stainless, clean touch. Um, inox they call them. That's a handy little space but also inside which we'll look at later you've, you've got a, a dedicated fridge freezer or two more little yeah. fridge freezers. A couple of storage holes. Yep storage holes so this is kind of like a little tool hole you know you put all your stuff in there hoses and cleaning gear and in this one I've got my axe and yabby pump and whatnot in there but so that's a long it's a long shoe that goes all the way through the other side I've got some fishing gear in there and Perfect. I've got beach rods in there all that stuff we've got the DO35 coupling yeah must have now you've got a little storage tank here yeah that's the hydro pro we get that system from cruise master so this particular van's running a electric assist disc brake system premium end braking it's really good really soft easy to adjust fairly serious jockey wheel system um, we started using these a few years ago they're really adjustable I think that's what I like most about them. You've got all the pins on the side, travels with the van so it all locks up and loads up flat. We've got a front boot here. Yep. It's not huge, but I notice you've got some flaps here on each side. What's hiding behind those? This van does run gas, gas cookers and gas heating. So yeah, two nine kilo bottles and just a storage hole. It's not a bad size and mm. it's a great place to be able to keep all the canvas and other gear. All right, as we continue our walk around, I was really impressed with this storage system in here. When I looked at this, all your chairs are inside here. Yep. You obviously you have your porta potty which comes out, but really what we've got hiding under here is a lot of the electrics. The big one you can see there, that's the Combi inverter charger from Enerdrive. It's a 3000 125 amp charger, 3000 watt inverter. It's an automatic transfer inverter, so if we've got him on and I just go ahead and plug into the mains, it'll just transfer the power throughout the van 
and do its own thing and still charge and top up and stuff. You've got your breakaway system to the right of that and then tucked in behind the corner there, you've got the DC to DC from Enerdrive, which is a 40 amp DC, so obviously it's a solar regulator and the DC charger while you're driving. So we're running 390 watt on the roof and just here to your left, there's a little input. You can run a solar mat. And we've talked about the suspension. We've talked about, you know, this is your chassis design. Yes. Travels really well as far as the geometrics go from your hitch to your axle, to your rear of your van and the load points in the van. You don't get any body sway. You don't need ECS or stabilization or bars on the front. It's fairly well balanced. The van is only 1.7 ton out the door, so. We've got our shower system behind this door. Yes. The top half will lift up. Um, this piece is fiberglass and this piece is aluminium. So this here will lift up and then the bottom, it's what we call the shower shield. It'll slide out um, like a big shield and it's got a pan in it. And the pan is, it does have a cavity and it'll drain the water into the gray tank. And now that's ready to go, that's rock solid. So we can go and zip on the, the pod, which will enclose this area. And the pod has two liners to it, so you can roll up the sides and the outside and you've got ventilation. This is the, the Tule V16, 12 volt, everything bike rack. <laughs> it can handle three bikes. We've got it set up for two, but you can operate the system. Once you get your bikes on there, it'll kind of take itself down for you and lower it right down and saves you trying to lift. There has been a, a lot of development in the, the back of the pursuit here. And I guess one of the big driving factors were it had to be able to fit a 35 inch tire. Not many people are running um, anything bigger than a 35. 35 quite often is a question for a lot of people these days with your patrols and your land cruisers coming out stock with nearly 33s. The van had to be capable of fitting a 35 in its spare. The design is that the cradle takes most of the weight and it's crunched up in there nice and tight. It won't jiggle around. We've got a bottle jack down in the side here. It's hard to see, but there is a, a four ton bottle jack down in there. You've got your max tracks, wood storage either side, and then jerry cans on the sides. So a bit of an all in one area for storage. We've got the inside to look at. That's yes. the next exciting part. So why don't we go inside we'll sure. and get it knocked over. So we want some lighting and go in. Uh, we've got our homepage for BRS and we can switch our internal lights on, our external lights on and off. Uh, we can view our water tanks, our battery voltage and current and your state of charge. You can dim your lights, you know, it's a fairly intuitive system. You sort of learn as you go with it. The pages you see here with our brand on it is it's dedicated for us. Um, we can adjust our air system left, right, airbags up and down. We have modes which we can adjust the modes which will switch particular things on and off. In our case, we have water pump, hot water, air compressor, the three fridges and dust suppression. So you may or may not want to switch your dust suppression on depending on the, on the road you're on. If it gets really dusty and you've got this tablet in your car, you can go ahead and switch your dust suppression on and bang, we're getting pressure in the cab and it's going to keep the dust out. This is set up with all your types of travel apps. So HEMA, TripAdvisor, Overlander. So you can go ahead and and search for particular things, you know, if you want to look for a dump point or, you know, a rest area. And you can plan routes on this. You can have particular points of interest. This is your reverse camera as well. So we run a wireless BC50 camera from Garmin. It's a really clear, crisp camera. I'm particularly enamored of the, basically what I'd call a skylight, mm. you know. Yes, you've got mesh there. Yes, you can have it open, but if it's raining and it's, or whatever, you're sleeping at night, you just want to be able to look at the stars. Mm. How gorgeous. A decent sized bed here. Yeah. Yeah. So standard queen size bed. Lots of storage either side, I notice. You've got storage. power points, yeah. you've got hanging storage. Yes. Now you do a lot of this all in-house. All in-house. We've got some really skilled workers and we produce everything you see, you know, other than the components we buy. So these, what we call the soft goods, that's a leather, you know, all the lounge. Yeah, that's all done in-house. Again, we've got more storage under here for clothes and bits and pieces, which we can look at after. The cupboards, all soft clothes with a latch so and the storage in this space and above the sink and the bench and with the cooktop great for touring it's what we would call a galley kitchen it's been finely tuned over the years and i think we've kind of settled on a on a layout big sink this van in particular is running induction cooking it's all premium european hardware 
Bloom hardware. We're using Fenix from Nova. So high pressure laminates, marine grade, and it's all cut out and put together in, in one big segment where it interlocks. We're not relying on screws or glue. As we look up the top, we've got our TV there. We've got our hub. What are our other controllers doing up there? So we have hot water system. We have the Truma Onet and Range Hood, 240 power and then your stereo. It's got your two speakers either side, so they're JBL, and on the outside we use Rockford MOSFET. Under these seats is our extra fridges. Yes, 30 litres a piece. This one, we've actually got some bait in here. <laughs> so this one's on freeze. And then on the other side, we've just got the bits and pieces you want to access quickly, you know. Behind me, we've got the remote for the inverter. So I can go ahead and turn the inverter on, and we're powered up. So microwave, induction cooktop, power points, all on and then you can go ahead and switch it off because you don't want to use too much power. I love it. Thanks for showing us around. Not a problem and thanks for having me. We've been looking forward to showing off what we can do and what we're making these days. So yeah, not a problem.